herzlich willkommen alle zu dem äh, dritten und auch äh, dem letzten Video dieses Thema. Äh, so, allerdings Experten warnen vor Stigmatisierung und anstecken kann sich jeder. In Großbritannien wird ein dreijähriges Kind auf der Invest Intensivs Intensivstation behandelt. Die WHO arbeitet bereits an Leitlinien zur Eindämmung. Man befürchtet, dass die Zahl der Fälle in den Sommermonaten ansteigt. Bevor Bläschen auftreten, beginnen Affenpocken mit Symptomen wie Fieber und Schmerzen. Sie wurden ursprünglich nicht von Affen, sondern von Nagetiere übertragen. Erleben wir mit den aktuellen Affenpochenfällen einer Corona Déjà Vu. Wieder wird über Impfungen diskutiert, über Quarantäne, über die Gefahr einer globalen Ausbreitung. I cannot wait until this microphone stand that I ordered on Amazon comes. Cause this ain't it, Chief. Um, yeah, if you couldn't tell, this is a very low budget operation. Uh, but once that ad revenue comes in, we are going to be making some major upgrades to the studio. <clears throat> By studio, I mean, of course, uh, mein schönes Schlafzimmer. Natürlich. Also, so it says, um, that being said, experts warn of stigmatization. Anyone can become infected. A three-year-old child is being treated in the ICU. Sorry, just wanted to make sure my microphone was on. Um, a three-year-old child is being treated in the ICU. The World Health Organization, or WHO, is already working on guidelines for containment. There is fear that the number of cases will see a spike in the summer months. Also, I think this is now going to um, be a dual language learning slash ASMR channel. So, if the one person subscribed to this channel doesn't appreciate that, then I'm kind of screwed. Um, so anyways, prior to blisters appearing, initial monkeypox sy symptoms include fever and aches. The original transmission wasn't for monkeys, actually but rather rodents. Uh, yeah, like we saw with the graphic. Are we experiencing a corona deja vu with the current monkeypox cases? Once again, we're seeing discussions around vaccines, around quarantining, and the threat of a global outbreak. Uh, yeah, it's getting a little, um, a little doom and gloom up in this article. I have another opinion on this, but I will save that for the end because I hear that is what YouTubers do to, um, let's say, optimize their watch time. They save the juiciest part for the end. So I am just going to fall in line. Holacek will Impfstoff ordern. Remember, like I said in the first video, so this, this means, um, Holacek intends to order vaccines as in order them from a company, not to mandate them. Auch im Bild Talk, die richtigen Fragen, ging es am Sonntag um die Frage, wie gefährlich ist das Virus und was schützt. Bayerns Gesundheitsminister Klaus Holacek, 57, CSU, will umfangreiche Präventionsmaßnahmen gegen Affenpocken nach Vorbild Großbritanniens. Quote, ich glaube, es ist schon wichtig, dass wir Impfstoff jetzt auch ordern, sagte Holecek. Widerspruch von Arzt und Publizist Gunther Frank, 59. Die Aufgabe von Medizin sei, die Menschen zu informieren und, quote, keine Panik zu schüren.
So it says, um, the Sunday episode of, um, the, this new segment on Build Talk, uh, called Die Richtigen Fragen, which is the right questions, uh, dealt with the questions of how dangerous is this, is the virus, and how to protect oneself. Bavaria's Minister of Health, Klaus, Klaus Holecek, 57, of the, uh, I always forget what CSU is. Um, Die Christlich Soziale Union in Bayern. Yeah. Uh, wants to take extensive preventative measures against monkeypox following the UK's model. He says, quote, I believe that even at this point, it is vital that we order vaccines. Um, physician and publicist Gunther Frank, 59, objects to this. Um, according to him, the purpose of medicine is to inform people and, quote, not to stoke panic or, or stir up panic. Keine Panik zu schüren. Heikelstes Thema. It's a hard word. Das vermutete höhere Risiko für homosexuelle Männer. CDU Politiker Erwin Rödel, 55, kann sich zwar keine Pockenimpfpflicht vorstellen, aber quote, vielleicht eine Empfehlung für bestimmte Personengruppen. <lacht> eine Aussage, bei der der Arzt und Publicist Gerhard Trabert, 65, eine quote, Stigmatisierung von Homosexuellen fürchtet. Immerhin, Holetschek sieht auch deutliche Unterschiede zu Corona. Quote, wir sprechen jetzt nicht sofort von einer neuen Pandemie. Wir sprechen von einer Entwicklung, die man genau beobachten muss. Bedeutet, einen Affenpocken-Lockdown muss laut Holetschek niemand befürchten. So, to wrap things up, it says, the most sensitive issue or topic here the supposed increased risk for homosexual men. Certainly, CDU politician, CDU, this is uh, Die Christlich Demokratische Union Deutschlands, Erwin Rödel, 55, can't envision a mandatory monkeypox vaccine, but, per, but quote, perhaps a recommendation for certain groups of people. Gee, I wonder which groups he's referring to. Uh, a statement that physician and publicist Gerhard Trabert, 65, fears will create a stigma among the gays. Uh, at any rate, Holetschek also sees clear differences with the coronavirus, saying, quote, We're not talking about a new pandemic right away. We're talking about a progression that, uh, that needs to be closely monitored. <clears throat> All that to say, nobody should fear a monkeypox lockdown, according to Holetschek. Yeah, um, okay, so, my long-awaited opinion. I mean, so, from the objective facts that have been presented thus far, and I've read a few articles on this, it's not just this one, I, I also don't foresee this being as catastrophic an event as COVID was for a couple of reasons. Um, first, as this graphic mentions, the smallpox vaccine is already 85% effective in protecting against monkeypox. Um, you know, I know that's not 100%, but, but it, that's, a, that's, a pretty, um, that's a pretty solid percentage. Um, and the thing is, like, with COVID, there was no vaccine at the outset of, of all that. We literally had to invent one. And it's a miracle that we were even able to pull that off with the expediency that we did. Um, and the second reason is it sounds like these countries that are um, seeing an outbreak of this are taking it extremely seriously. 
and I don't, I don't want to say they're taking it too seriously because, like I said, after after COVID, you really just don't know what can happen in this type of a situation. But I will say, I think that COVID, you know, as devastating a situation as it was, it it really did teach us how to combat a, a brand new disease on a global level. You know, the whole the whole concept of like self-quarantining and isolating and and wearing masks in public, you know. I don't want to say like all that wasn't a thing before COVID. Um because th those those things have always existed, um, albeit on a much smaller scale and under much rarer circumstances, I would say. But you know, God forbid something like like that ever happens again. I think we've kind of learned how to deal with it, and not just deal with it, but how to take you know active measures to mitigate the spread of it, and. Um, so like I said, I mean, at this point, I don't think this is as big a deal as some are making it out to be. <clears throat> In particular, I feel like, um, the American media is sort of sensationalizing this more than their European counterparts. And part of that is, I'm sure, driven by ratings and, you know, getting as many eyeballs on the screen for monetary gain. Which is to be expected to some degree, but I mean, like, look, the economy's already in the crapper right now, and should this virus spread to the extent that COVID did, which, as I as I say again, I think is highly unlikely, but I mean, the economy isn't going to be able to take that. I mean, there's already so much turmoil. You know, we're we're on the heels of a recession. <clears throat> As some believe um, so I mean we'll just have to wait and see how this all pans out but like I said I don't think it's anything serious at this point and you know these countries are taking necessary preventative measures it sounds like to contain it before any you know widespread infection occurs so that's my take on that vielen dank alle fürs zuschauen auf Wiedersehen